Tiens, tu es en dette Good afternoon. I am YM1 Akaya Miller. I will be the master of ceremonies for today's Memorial Day ceremony. We kindly ask at this time that everyone with a cell phone or a pager please turn them off or place them in manner mode for the duration of the ceremony. Thank you. Welcome to the U.S. Naval Air Facility at Sugi, Japan Memorial Day ceremony. Today, you will have an opportunity to witness the tradition of honoring the sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. A day is set aside to commemorate the memories of those who have guarded the freedoms we enjoy today. Please rise for the playing of the national anthems of the United States and Japan, and remain standing for the invocation. Color Guard, Parade the Colors. Chaplain Sundermeyer will now give the invocation. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, it is with somber hearts that we pause this day and reflect upon the countless men and women who have died in service of our nation. We thank you on behalf of a grateful nation for your grace and provision, for your comfort and peace, and for the selfless sacrifice of these we reverence this day. We humbly ask that you look upon these, our brothers and sisters, who have embraced the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate act of selflessness, with mercy as we seek to honor their sacrifice. May we be filled with the courage reflected in these who did not shrink from the mission set before them, but gave themselves completely to the cause of defending and protecting us all. May your blessings be with these who have given their lives for the sake of liberty. We ask that you would grant them eternal rest with you. We also remember those who are presently answering the call to stand the watch, both home and abroad. We ask, O oh God, that your presence and protection would be with each as they discharge their duties with honor, courage, and commitment. May their service bring stability and peace in the midst of our broken and chaotic world. We ask that you would bring them home safely. O oh God, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Sundermar. Before we begin, we will pause for a moment of silence and reflect on the service and sacrifices made by veterans past and by those active duty service personnel wherever they may be all over the world. Will the guests please be seated? I would like to welcome Master Chief Tisdale, Command Master Chief, U.S. Naval Air Facility at SUGI, as she delivers service remarks. Master Chief Tisdale will be followed by VWF Post 9612, Junior Vice Commander Matthew Beaver as today's guest speaker. American holiday observed on the last Monday of May, honoring the men and women who died while serving in the U.S. military. Originally known as Decoration Day, it, is, it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday in 1971. Many Americans observed Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials, holding family gatherings, and participating in parades. Less than 1% of our nation wears a uniform, and so few Americans see the patriotism with their own eyes or know someone who exemplifies it. But every day, there are American families who pray for the sound of a familiar voice when the phone rings, for the arrival of a loved one's letter or email. More than a million times in our history, it didn't come. Instead, a car pulled up to the house, and there was a knock on the front door and the sound of taps floated through a cemetery trees. On Memorial Day, we reveal ourselves in our words and deeds, but also by the simple act of listening. I challenge you all to listen to the stories that Gold Star families and veterans have to tell. Ask about who he or she was and why they volunteered. Hear from those who love them about what their smile looked like and their laugh sounded like and their dreams they had for their future. As former President Barack Obama stated, a nation reveals itself not only by the people it produces, but by those it remembers. We do not just sit, we do not so not just by hoisting the flag, but by lifting up our neighbors. Not just by pausing in silence, but by practicing in our own lives the ideals, opportunities, liberty, and equality that they fought for. We can serve others and contribute to the causes they believe in, and above all, keep their stories alive. Our fallen, we are so proud of them, so grateful for their sacrifice, and so thankful to their families. 
May God bless our fallen and their families. May God bless all of you. And may God forever bless the United States of America. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir, Kaplan, Anton Major. My name is Sergeant Matthew Beaver. I'm here on behalf of the VFW, and I am very grateful for this opportunity to be here. On Memorial Day, we offer our, uh, we honor our fallen, but we must also embrace the honor, the feeling of honor, patriotism, and pride. 150 years ago, have passed. Years have passed since a drugstore in Waterloo, New York, encouraged businesses to close for one day to honor the soldiers who had lost their lives during the Civil War, an idea that was received well. For one day, businesses closed. Windows placed fresh flowers on graves. Widows placed fresh flowers on graves. Townspeople placed wreaths and cross upon the headstones. And flags were flown at half staff. It was then that American tradition was born. From the earliest days of America's founding, our great nation has been blessed with a generation after generation of patriots willing to lay down their lives in the defense of our freedom and our way of life. We are truly fortunate to, have, to live in a country worth fighting for, to be afforded a way of life worth dying for. Millions of men and women have selflessly answered the call of the nations in need. Throughout our history, they fought for a myriad of reasons to amend America's wounded spirit, to restore the, the strength of the free world, and to free the world from tyranny, oppression, cruelty, and evil. Today we play a tribute to those her heroic patriots who made the ultimate sacrifice who bravely rose up and fought for something greater than themselves, protecting a home to which they never returned. We honor their service, mourn their loss, and remember their families they left behind. In the quiet stillness of this holiday, we must remember there has been no other nation on earth whose sacrifice has been greater than ours, none who have given so much to afford others freedom. The sacred ground of Arlington and our cemeteries in France, Belgium, Hawaii, and the Philippines remain a solemn, solemn testament to the steep price of achieving and maintaining freedom around the globe. With heavy hearts, we recall those lost. They had names. They had families. They were our brothers and our sisters. Moms dads, children. It is their ultimate sacrifice and the grief-filled tears of parents who have given America their own children and the spouses who are left to bear the unthinkable burdens after their lives are forever changed that have paid for the freedoms we enjoy today. In order to repay, the, in order to repay our debt to them, we must remain dedicated to honoring the legacy of our nation's fallen by educating all who believe that Memorial Day is just another holiday and by passing our knowledge along to the next generation so they may do the same. We must ensure the youth of tomorrow understands the true cost of freedom. There is no greater way to honor the memory of those who have secured it. We honor the dead by helping the living and caring for those who have returned from their wars. Serving with dedication and valor, Americans veteran, America's veterans deserve proper medical care and compensation for their many sacrifices to our country. They deserve the opportunity for employment, education, and a home to which, uh, uh, to which live. Each of us here today must leave with a renewed commitment to do all we can do to help those who have done so much for us and ask for nothing in return. As we depart, we will undoubtedly continue to bear the burden of the loss and the com that comes with losing a family member, a friend, one of our brothers or sisters in arms. 
but we may find comfort in knowing their lives were never, were not lost in vain, but remain forever grateful to them for having gift, and gifted us the greatest gift on earth, freedom. Thank you for being here today. God bless America's fallen. God bless our troops. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Master Chief Disdale and Junior Vice Commander Beaver. We now welcome VFW Post 9612, Quartermaster Matthew Meneas from VFW Post 9612. In Flanders Fields, Poppies bloom between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard among the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders Field. Take upon our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be, be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. The poppies grow in Flanders Field. Thank you, Mr. Menendez, for your remarks and the reading of your Flanders Field. I now welcome M.A. 1 Lamour for the remembering of the POWs and MIAs. I would like us to turn our attention to the table that has been prepared for the ceremony. Those who have served and those who currently serve in the uniformed service of the United States are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and eternity. We call your attention to this small table which occupies a place of dignity and honor near the head table. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that members of our armed forces are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and families tonight, so we join together to pay our humble tribute to them and bear witness to their continued absence. This table set for one is small, symbolizing fertility of one prisoner alone against his oppressions. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intention to respond to their country's call to arms. The single rose displayed in the vase reminds us the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep faith awaiting their return. The yellow ribbon tied so prominently on the base is reminiscent of the red ribbon worn on the lapel and breast of those thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of their mission. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. There is a salt upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. The glass is inverted they cannot toast with us this day. This chair, the chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to emulate their way home, away from their captors, 
to the open arms of a grateful nation. Let us pray to the supreme commander that all of our comrades will serve <coughs> the back with, with him arms. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifices. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their family. Flag detail. Attention. At this time, AM1 Rembrandt, please come up for the reading of Old Glory. United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over the great institutes of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military powers in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher, my colors a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am saluted. I am respected. I am revered. I am loved. And I am feared. For more than 200 years, I have fought every battle of every war. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox. San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, the deserts of Africa, the cane fields of the Philippines, the rice paddies and jungles of Guam, and score of places long forgotten by those, all but those who were with me. I was there. I led my sailors and marines. I followed them. I watched over them, and they loved me. I was on a small hill in Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired, but my sailors and marines cheered me, and I was proud. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries I have helped set free. It does not hurt, for I am invincible. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my country, and when it was by those whom I have served in battle, it hurt. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space from my vantage point on the moon. I have been a silent witness to all of America's finest hours, but my finest hour comes when I am torn into strips to be used for bandages for my wounded comrades in the field of battle. When I fly at half-mast to honor my sailors and marines, and when I lie in the trembling arm of a grieving parent at the graveside of their fallen son or daughter, I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God. Long may I wave.
we will now commence with the final salute. Detail, attention. I represent the fallen of the Iraq war. I represent the fallen of the Afghanistan war. I represent the fallen of the global war on terrorism. I represent the fallen of the Bosnia and Kosovo campaigns. I represent the fallen of Operation Desert Storm. I represent the fallen of the Cold War. I represent the fallen of the Vietnam War. I represent the fallen of the Korean War. I represent the fallen of World War I. I represent the fallen of World War II. They represent the fallen of all wars and service to the United States of America. We will now commence with the reflame ceremony. Representative of the United States Army. Representative of the United States Air Force. Representative of the United States Navy. Representative of the Veterans of Foreign Wars.
Please welcome Chaplain Sundermeyer for the benediction. NFSUGI, attention. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have paused this day to remember the lives of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. We have honored these who heroically set before us their devotion to the mission of bringing peace and stability into the world. We have acknowledged the privilege we now embrace in wearing the uniform that represents their service and memory to our nation. So now as we continue to answer the call and stand the watch, may your grace be with us, may your peace flow through us, may your presence go before us, and may we be the living witnesses of these whom we have honored this day. O oh God, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Sundermar. Please join me in thanking the following organizations for their contributions today. VFW Post 9612 and the Commander 7th Fleet Navy Band and all the volunteers for today's service. Thank you. On behalf of the veterans, past and present, thank you for attending. NFSUG, at ease. Captain Bush, would you like to add any remarks? Thank you all for coming. Dismiss. <laughs>